<laughs> yeah. Hey, thank you all of you for uh, being, uh, being willing to come out and spend a beautiful evening uh, for a little bit doing this. So why do we bother having buildings at all? I mean, we're all kind of in the buildings business in one way or another, some more directly, some indirectly. I think the question in some ways is, how do we rethink the environment in which we find ourselves? To that extent, this is how we look at our business, how we look at what we're for in this grand ecosystem of organizations thinking about place. And you'll notice that we're, we're highlighting a couple of words and place isn't one of them. Um, it's about experiences, and it's ultimately about the, the domain of work, how that happens, what it means, how it's changing, changing, how we're adapting as that unfolds, et cetera. And so that's more or less the topic for tonight. The reason we bother with trying to look forward or to achieve foresight is to think more concretely about what we need to do to be prepared, uh, prepared both opportunistically and prepared defensively. So our group is called Workspace Futures, WSF. It's sort of an interesting title. It's basically a research and development group, but we don't spend uh, sort of the time that you might expect thinking about how to better form a plastic or how to you know, create a new mechanism or something like that or what the sustainability of a particular element may be relative to a product. That stuff is all important, and that happens, but it happens someplace else. It's not what research is in our company. Research in our company is about design research. It's about, if you will, the simple intersection of two big ideas. And those ideas are the social sciences. And then this other piece of the work experience that I was just talking about a second ago. And the intersection of those two is kind of how we define our research effort. So, the first group attempts to take the prototypes that have been defined and demonstrate them, develop the proof models, use them in situ, use them in real time, use them in alpha ways, meaning internally on ourselves and in beta ways with clients. The second group looks at um, vertical industries. This is primarily a design research group. So there's a third group that looks out there, and their primary role is to look at technologies. And then the last group is my group which looks at um, essentially the integration of these forces and tries to say, you know, from what we're learning in situ, what we're learning is we study different dimensions of the work experience deeply and what we learn when we look widely and broadly at the future of technology, for example, what's our point of view on that? How can we be smart about what we think may be unfolding in a way that our business can actualize something that delivers value to you and your clients? So the, the group that I just described, this sort of workspace futures, group is over here. And um, as we said, research and reality really aren't oftentimes the same thing. In fact, if you live in the research world, whether it's academics or companies, um, an awful lot of the reality part of your organization sort of is more focused on what you've done for me lately. It's pretty difficult to maintain a very strong, forward-leaning, outside-looking thing unless you're delivering something back to reality on a regular basis. And so our goal is to find the little edge of reality, if you will, that point that Gibson talked about where the future is already here, it's just not evenly distributed. So if we can go out and find places where the next is trying to happen sooner, we can learn more there. There's a whole lot of work going on in the world today. In fact, there's more work going on that we would consider to be generally office work than has ever been the case in human history. All right, the sort of idea of office work gets bigger and bigger every day. And yet, it's also just as true that it's leaving the office building. Like Elvis, it's kind of leaving the building, right? And so if you're in the building business, as many of us sitting in this room tonight are, I think it behooves us all to sort of ask, you know, what is the purpose? of that building that we think is so central to what we do and that we assess our own, our own sense of value against. One of the trends we're following today and certainly one of the trends that um, I would say probably all of us think about in terms of our business is this idea of distributed work. So what does that really mean? Well, historically, of course, 
if we just stop and look at time, because time is really important in understanding trends, the I spaces tended to be owned, right? And the we spaces tended to be shared. And what's happening, of course, in general terms, is we're seeing the owned, or the shared, rather, we spaces become owned spaces by project teams. So the energy is moving from the top right quadrant down here at the exact same time as we're moving away from owned I spaces to shared I spaces. Now, all of this is interesting, and it's all sort of obvious, I guess, but let's add the next axis to it, because there really is another one. So this sort of whole idea of virtual space and physical space, and how do those work together? Sun Micro's most recent building, Palo Alto, PA18, is a virtual building. There is no building. None. It's on a server. You can buy software from IBM or Cisco to build these yourself. Cisco's learning campus is in Second Life, the prototype one that they built. They have one that's behind their own firewall where it actually works. So these are worlds where you go in and are there without being there, right? Now, we might all stand back and go, oh, wait, just a minute. Give me a break. Like this little cartoon thing? Like I'm gonna go have a conversation about something meaningful and write on some sort of a virtual board with you? Come on. Well, you know, what's the carbon cost of getting together all the time, right? What's the cost of driving into the work to work every day? Just those two things alone. By the way, what about the team that's not here but they're in Venezuela or Kuala Lumpur? What if we could walk into a virtual room, walk into a virtual strategy scenario where in fact all of this stuff is real and we're in it and we're building a team and we're making relationships, establishing new social bonds. My God, is that right for you? Ask your kid. Don't design it for you, right? Here's one of the great conundrums in the building business is that people who have the gold get to make the rules. Right? And so we tend to design backwards, not forwards, to the best of our intent. So go engage with the younger employees of the firm for whom the next project is really being designed anyway, because they're the ones who are going to use it the longest, and ask them about this engagement process. So this whole idea of virtual and physical spaces and this new complementarity is a really interesting dimension to what the building business means.